You are listening to the Brain Software Podcast. This is episode 201, emanating from the hypnotic world epicenter, Toronto, Canada. Today, Mike Mandel and I will be talking all about beliefs, so stay tuned. Disclaimer, listening to this podcast is very much like frying rainbow trout in clarified butter in a cast iron pan to a nice golden crust. It's just as fulfilling and every bit as dangerous. Hey man, what's happening, Smo? I hope you're digging life to the degree that yours truly is, man. I was just listening to Sergeant Pepper this morning, and then it was on to Vanilla Fudge and then Iron Butterfly, dude. Can you dig it? It was just far out, man. Right up there with that fantastic 1970 purple microdot pouch. Whatever happened to that old Donovan-style mellow yellow tranquility we used to groove to goes all the way back to the summer of love circa 1967, Scro. Ah, ha, 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 ha. These, These are, are days, days of peace, peace love, and, and victory, victory Scro. Welcome, boys and girls. I'm Fritz Thompson, and you've just found the Fritz and Jeff Show. So dig deep into the arcane knowledge coming your way and get your head out of the bag of pickles and help me welcome to the hypnotic grassy knoll, the hypnotic socket wrench himself, the leather man of love, and the Keith Richards of hypnosis, Mike Mandel. Yes, Chris. Oh, it's a pleasure to start off with a and a uh, mm -hmm, and we are not witches. <laughs> I almost forgot the introduction part of actually yeah, saying we'll edit that name. out. Don't, yeah, worry, don't worry about it. What are we <laughs> talking about today, Scroll? Well, I believe we're talking all about beliefs. Yeah, and clever. it's it's a fun one because so for those of you watching or listening to this podcast, the timing happens to line up with we've been in heavy production and writing mode yeah. on a complete from the ground up rebuild of our main course on personal development called the Personal Development Academy. And we were just discussing beliefs quite a bit in prep for this and thought, heck, let's do a podcast about it. Fantastic. Anything we have to promote? Anything coming no, up? No, not really. Just uh, go to our website, sign up for our mailing list. And, and what is the website, Chris? Stuff. Mike Mandel Hypnosis.com. All right, let's move All right. right into I've the I've got content. the think tank words ready. Again, these are done directly from Savo Bukacek's think tank mm. of random words generated by spinning the dials. Don't touch that dial. We'll do it for you. All right. And here's the three words that we will attempt to graft to the topic matter today to exercise our brains and to show you how clever we are. The first think tank word, Chris. I'll give you all three of them. All right. We'll put them up on the screen. Fret work. Fret work is the Fret one. Fret work. Saving. Saving. And barometer. Barometer. What all do you right. get from fret work? Fret work makes, well, I assume we're talking guitar fret work. Well, I don't know. It's, I imagine. What, what did Savo I, I think mean about by Actually, what I think about, because I love learning guitar, I'm not that good at it, but I do appreciate that the improvement comes in increments mm. and everything in life seems to move forward in increments. You're going back to a previous podcast, mm -hmm. Incrementalism and Everything, <laughs> I know. attempting to but do But I think that back. beliefs, since we're talking about beliefs, beliefs can also change incrementally or they can just be shattered. Blown right? out. So you, up, yeah. you know, you think about fret work, you think about someone playing a guitar and then maybe you hear a Metallica song with yeah. all the tapping and you go, whoa, that's totally foreign to the normal chord strumming and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Good point in a way. Um, in a way. So what about saving? I agree with you on saving. fret work. I yeah. go to guitar right away with that. In fact, the other night, two nights ago, I got my, mm. one of my guitars, my Strat out, as you have a Strat too. And I was just up and down the neck mm. playing like Jack the Neck player because I've got the calluses back. So I, do, I used to have fingertips like babies bums for a while Baby. and every press on the strings was agony but i oh, do it because i care yeah so we got fret work to me that means yeah the increments learning something mm -hmm. incrementally learning different techniques oh, like what whatever it is leaning into the microphone like what i said yes what you said <laughs> but what i want to add to that is using that across the board anything we're learning oh. we're back to incrementalism how are we going to play those frets how are we going to crank that chord i like that because there's a pattern said nothing I there's really a pattern I've said to nothing. the frets yeah. and the strings like a box and pattern so you can take an a chord blues. here or you can play an a chord in a different pattern or you can, you can feed can acorns to pigs and it patterns makes along chord. the fretboard all right well, what about saving you can save time um how 
How okay. would you save time? By um, not listening to this podcast. Right. That would probably be a huge mm -hmm. time saver. Time well spent doing something other than what you're doing right now. <laughs> and how do I know you're listening? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? We, yeah. I know. I know. I that actually you're can listening tell right you're listening to this and some of you are watching this right now. Now, oh, saving. Okay. Well, saving somebody from drowning, like throwing a life preserver over the side of a ship. That's a good, yeah. Saving. Yeah. Literally now, saving. If you're someone. drowning, you mm -hmm. don't want someone to do the fret work and save you incrementally. Okay. I'll throw you a life preserver. Server, but I'm going to cut it up into little tiny pieces with this leather man here and throw them <laughs> off to you and you can reassemble them and see if you're able to float. I, I was actually just, when you said saving and, yeah. you, and you threw out the idea of saving like a life jacket, someone from drowning, is saving money a metaphor or is saving actually defined that way too? Oh, Are I don't we know. using a metaphor when we say we're saving our money? Good question. Like saving it from drowning, saving it from certain death by, That's good because question. we spent it on junk food maybe um, i remember my stepmother stepmother no my mother-in-law not my stepmother my mother-in-law different person heather's mother she was very smart a phd in common sense oh. and um i remember heather came in and said oh i bought these shoes and i bought this look at all the money i saved because they were on sale right oh because it had the tag yeah, on. compare at this yeah, price at. you saved and her mom said you didn't save anything you spent money yeah that's uh, totally true oh, if, and, and that's like that's life that's where amazing to me, saving Im immediately jumped to belief systems. We can believe that we're doing a good job by saving our money, or there are other people that you meet that spend it and they seem to love their life. Now, maybe they don't have any save for their retirement or whatever. Right. And I'm not saying that you want to live at either end of the extreme, but there are it's different belief systems. Are, you, yeah, I know. It's always all continuous. Life is a bunch of continuums. Here's another way you can save time. Don't tell Ken Sweatman stories. Right. And you didn't. You no, just did it. I did. Okay. Let's, it wasn't an explication. It was let's just move on. I'm feeling barometer. the pressure here, Mike. Well, yes, because it's barometer, Chris. It checks <laughs> pressure. Isn't that amazing? Amazing how all this right. happened. So a barometer measures atmospheric, atmospheric pressure, pressure, right? 14.7 right? pounds per square right. inch. There we go. Yeah, but everybody rounds it off to 1,500 kilopascals. Yeah, there yeah, you yeah. go. Yeah. Okay, point, so we've got point. a barometer, a barometer. So we're judging mm. pressure, and we're under pressure now because we haven't gotten to the point of beliefs Are yet. your beliefs under pressure? Do they need to be under pressure, under or should pressure. they be relaxed and stable mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stay mm -hmm. that way? Do, 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 do. Under ding, pressure. Ding. like to have crossing right. my hands like David Bowie did. <laughs> it's just the subtle details. We care about you so much, we freaking get it right. <laughs> Okay, so let's continue. What is a belief, Chris? Uh, well, that's uh. a really good... A, be, a belief is something that you hold to, or I, or you, or right? one, hold to be true, All right? right? It's something red flag that we ready. hold to be true. Yeah. So Can I have a few more red flags? I just got oh, a you, yeah, I need here, them. Here's a flag. Okay, I'm, here's I'm, a three, flag. Three will probably be enough. Here's a, here we go. Kill okay, it. there you got right, some red so flags. In let case me wave, goes wave they get now. to the point red flag. All right. For both of us. So. Wave me for both of us. There we go. Belief, something that we hold to be true. Hmm. But is a belief true, Mark? Well, that's the thing. Hmm. Is a belief always true or always correct? Well, we know that's certainly not the case because people have a wide variety of beliefs that are radically different than other people's and, beliefs. And we. So we form beliefs either unconsciously or consciously, right? We can grow up as kids and be told something by our parents. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah. Or we'll we get can to decide Wait. to form beliefs. And there's a no, whole we'll bunch get of to stuff that we're going to talk about. You're jumping ahead on the, the thing like Jack the Ahead Jumper. It's because you waved the, the point. I know. Yeah. It, the belief. Is it always true or correct? That's what we're mm -hmm. questioning. Now, obviously not. I can think of a case, Chris. When I was a kid, my mom had seen something on this TV show called The Galloping Gourmet with Graham mm -hmm, Kerr. Mm -hmm. And she had all these these weird ideas. Like if you have potatoes in water, you put a lump of coal in with them. It stops the potatoes going brown. I, I don't know if that works because of carbon or something. Anthracite versus bituminous coal. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. But she got this other one. My dad opened the fridge and she had bottles of like the big bottles of Coke and ginger ale and stuff mm -hmm. we used to drink when we were kids. And the lid was gone because these were pry off lids. You couldn't have a screw cap then. There was no such thing. And she had spoons. Like, I'll use a red flag. Because it looks like a spoon, yeah. apparently. This was stuck into this, like, as if the bottle had a urethra. This would be <laughs> in the very urethra of the bottle, okay? <laughs> Stay with me here. And so there's a spoon hanging inside the bottle. I don't think it was even touching the liquid. So the, the bowl of the, the spoon, which would correspond to another part of the yeah. body is not is not touching the liquid anyway my mom did this because somebody online on, online somebody on television i think the ground galloping her. gourmet said this stops the pop from going flat my Which dad, makes no sense my in the world. dad being an engineer he said this is witchcraft he said this won't do anything oh, and the man. pop always went flat and guess what my mom kept doing it 
Why was that, Chris? Because she believed it was You're somehow me helping. Think about uh, oftentimes she got a scratch. It's my calf. Don't when worry. It, when it comes to I'm things that are the treasure, things here. that are mechanical mm. or electrical machines, yeah. whatever. My wife Which might, turn, might say, well "We are. need we need to turn something off." You know why? Why? To give it a rest. Oh yeah. <laughs> to give it a rest. I know. It always, yeah. No, I know it's metaphorical, oh, yeah. it's but it crazy. still it makes me chuckle because the idea of giving this thing a rest. It's not a, pr- a living. It's not a living being. It doesn't need a rest. It may. It may save its it, life in terms the, of lasting longer. Right. The saving, belief is so come to patently saving. incorrect. Yeah. You heard me mention when I was about. 20, I went up with this really hot girl from Finland. Her name was Tuliki. She liked Bridget Bardot with the makeup. If you don't know who Bridget Bardot is because you're not now old like me, okay, check Googling. out Orianti, the guitarist. That's what she looked like. It's amazing. Um, girl, not saying anything wrong with it, but anyway, Tuliki believed that if your car was, the battery was flat and you had it boosted, you know, you drive for a bit to build up the charge again. Yeah. She said you had to put your lights on when you did that because if you didn't, it would overcharge your battery. Oh, and wow. I tried to so explain that there was not a all kinds of science behind it. We, we could into do an entire episode on silly beliefs that aren't actually true. But then well, we she had another. Anywhere. She yeah. believed that when you had hot dogs, you had mm-hmm. to barbecue them or boil them because if you pan fried them, you'd get worms. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You can't make this there stuff are, up. So as you can imagine, there are a ton of things that we grow up believing yeah. that aren't necessarily true. Or and even if we don't challenge them, that's screwy. I'll tell you the weirdest one. When I was a kid, I remember me and my best friend at the time, Matthew Joffrey. I think we Chris, found a, no, we found a dead rat in the in the little park by our yeah. house. It had been eating fried it was, wieners. It was like a <laughs> It was, yeah, with the worms. Yeah. And it was, it was clearly dead now that I am an adult and understand this. We thought it was a, we told ourselves an entire story about this dead rat that had been kicked out of the home by its parents and it needed to come back to life. And if we just brought it home in a bucket, we didn't touch it because cognitive dissonance. We knew it was dead, (laughs) but we put it carefully with sticks in a bucket with some gravel, brought it home into the bathtub and we're about to pour water on it because this would revive it. How old are you? 17, 18? (laughs) I think it was probably about, we were probably about seven or something, six or seven. My mom caught us just as we were about to revive this thing in the bathtub. Yeah. And and what are you doing, Christopher? It was hilarious. Well, rats are responsible for a little upset a few centuries back called the bubonic plague. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting thing. That is a crazy story, but I can top it. Okay. Henry O'Hagan, my best friend when I was a kid in our apartment building. So I was 10. I think he was about eight. We got our Christmas presents. And one of the things he got was this substance, some chemical thing, probably carcinogenic. It was called gobs of fun. Oh, man. And it was colored. There was pink and there's yellow and there's green. And it's stuff you can mold and it would eventually dry up like Play-Doh kind of stuff, Mm. but gobs of fun. He and I were getting on the elevator and he had gobs of fun in his hand. I think it was the green one. It slipped out of his hand and <laughs> fell down between the edge of the elevator and the, the floor and dropped right through cleanly. Oh, man. And he was really upset. And I said to him, he was a little younger than me, as I said, I said, Henry, maybe the elevator was about to break down and explode or something and we could have fallen to our deaths. And Gobs of Fun knew that. And it fell down through there and saved our lives. So seriously did he take this that for like the next year, every now and then he'd say, Wow, remember when Gobs of Fun saved our lives? <laughs> you were 10 years old. It was two years before you started studying hypnosis <laughs> and you were already doing okay, it. I want you to talk about beliefs oh. are on a continuum. Okay, so we, we say that beliefs are on a continuum. And we're right. And yeah, continuum or spectrum. We talk about this a lot in the physics world. You got light, electromagnetic spectrum and radio waves and all that stuff. But beliefs can be on a spectrum too because you have at one end an opinion. You're not particularly married to it. It's something that you you think is probably true. You hold on to it. It's a really lightweight belief. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you've got what Tony Robbins would call a conviction. conviction. Yeah. Like, I deeply hold this belief. I know it to be true. And we've discussed this quite a bit and realized that- the, so Dr. Jekyll and Mr. The, Hyde. The, 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 yeah. no, the difference hey. seems to be- the amount of emotion that we tie to something. Now, right. I think we can still challenge that because I believe, for example, 
in the formulas from kinematics and physics. I can calculate how far a projectile will go if fired at this velocity. I and believe that not because I have, are, yeah. I don't have really emotion. I guess I do have some emotion tied to it because of course, like I've been doing this all my life when I studied engineering and physics and all that stuff. So I believe it. And if someone told me, oh, that's not the right formula, that's just your I'd, opinion. Probably, <laughs> I'd probably defend it with some emotion. So yeah. I correct myself. I changed my mind. Okay. I believe I've changed my mind on that. The more emotion that we have, the more likely something is to be a conviction. And now let's talk about how that can be problematic or helpful in life. Well, it, the problem with the conviction is because there is so much emotion invested in mm -hmm. it, that if someone challenges it, the emotion rises up right away and it can actually cause that it can cause it to set even harder. Yeah. People will defend to the death all sorts of things that are nonsensical. Now, it, like you believing the earth's flat. I mean, I still can't get around <laughs> that one. The earth is flat. That's right. Oh, that's hilarious. We have um, a couple of people in our friend circles that may hold on to those beliefs, but that's a story for another day. Um, <laughs> that's a horse of a different color. Yeah, there we go. He says, well, I was just about to make yeah. an even better joke, but I can't remember what it is now. So I'll. But the thing it. about opinions, Chris, and, and now because of all the saturation of. Oh, idiotic yeah. You cement. You talked oh, sorry. About, you talked about. Go ahead. I, was I just realized you had. I guess talk. it wasn't. <laughs> we're talking about. <laughs> we'll edit that out. Now listen. The thing about the thing about um. My, my temples are itching. The the whole thing about opinions with all the saturation of postmodern mm -hmm. idiocy that nothing means what you think it does and nothing is true. I hear more and more frequently when you can state something that is an established fact, morons will say. Well, that's just your opinion. Oh, it's just your opinion. Yeah, that does seem to be happening, happening more and more. In the counter today's. to that, in my mind, is I say, no, no, it's just your opinion that it's my opinion. Yeah. You always subvert it using that's the it. thing against itself. That's, it's that's freaking a, brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. Now I remember what we were saying is when, when you have emotion, it can kind of cement that opinion, that conviction, right? And that can be a good thing. That can be a bad thing. If you, if you have a deeply held conviction yeah. that a particular person is evil, and not useful in your life. If you're wrong, if that's a wrong opinion, yeah. and it's just because you attach some weird emotion, they're actually a great person. And if you opened up and became friends, that would be a really good contribution to your life. That would I, I would say that's a bad conviction. That's not useful. It's not Are you saying I have a problem you. in my marriage? Yeah, I'm saying that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah yes, I am. That. The other thing though is you could have a deeply held conviction yeah. that exercise is really important and going to give you a great life. Now that I would argue is a great belief to hold on to. And I would, turn think, into a I would think that's true. Right? That's true. Now I believe this is the first podcast where I've, I'm back to wearing my Rolex three quarter size uh -oh. perpetual oyster you make your chronometer. Usual joke. Um, no, I will. But my bullet of a watch with the larger one is in being repaired right now. Uh -oh. 150 bucks. Didn't want to get rid of it. So I took the Rolex. Sounds like my storage. Tesla. It's still keeping time flawlessly with the Swiss precision. My question is, are we getting any glare off it, Chris? That's all I want to know. Is, are we getting any glare off it on the screen? Right, I hope I not. I cheated and, and stole the joke from you, 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 had to wait, you had to wait an appropriate amount of time to reintroduce it. I like that. That's all right. Um, now, like some beliefs are created organically by life itself. Yeah, we, parents. We model our parents, yeah, right? For sure, so, right. Um, when I was a kid, I would imagine, what did I learn? Like, what did my parents? Oh, my mom. My mom was the best hypnotist ever. She said, oh, yeah, she was. You, I, had an, I had a bad... Uh, asthmatic childhood. So a lot of trips. As opposed to the really uh, enjoyable, oh, good asthmatic childhood. I'll yeah. tell you a quick story about this in a uh -oh. moment, if we if Can't we have time. Okay. But uh, my I remember my mom said, you will never smoke. If you smoke, it will kill you. Yeah. Well, that became a belief. Guess who has never, ever smoked anything in his life? Not ever even tried it once. This guy. Because my mom set that deep conviction belief in my brain i know it actually won't kill me if i was okay to now try that's it. interesting now i want you to do an nlp thing here mm -hmm. i want you to say this as though it's true and tell me how you feel oh okay okay, okay so, so, so will this scrap my belief no i okay. shouldn't you're a smart enough guy All say right. say my name is chris my name is chris i'm a hypnotist i'm a hypnotist and i'm a smoker and i'm a <laughs> It sounds so stupid. It yeah. does, doesn't it? It completely it like everything. Charles Tebbett's low. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a, yeah. a smoker. And, yeah, and some other things that go with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no look. So that's a belief that I got in childhood that definitely serves me well. Now. It could have served me poorly if it caused me to also think and attach meaning to it like, yeah. oh, I can't be a friend with a smoker because they're they're dumb or bad or evil you know or what whatever. They, yeah. Well, of course, 
I'm friends with people who smoke. It's not a judgment on the quality of them as a person. It's now, just since, a habit since, I don't want to do. Since this is Cannabis Canada, mm. uh, you know, uh, oh, coast true. to coast, yeah. cannabis in the grocery store, you know, in stores. Uh, there's like five of them near my house. I've heard. Um, you mentioned and, and, that and a you lot just go on this by, podcast. Don't, but no, but my point is, um, are any of the people you hang out with, would cannabis put you off the same way? No. In fact, when I, uh, there's another belief when I was a kid and I went to high school yeah. and people would go out and smoke in the smoking area smoke and sometimes in the you'd, you'd smell funny smells no, and you realize they would. Yeah, I would. And realize, yeah. oh, that's not a cigarette. That's something that's else. Something but, else. And even back from then, if, if someone smoked, say a joint, in the they were a druggie. They, uh, that was the term we used as a kid. He's a druggie, right? Uh, oh, that's horrible. Now I'm a little older and realize, you know what? I've seen plenty of people get drunk out of their minds and then get into fights and beat people's teeth in yeah, or whatever. Ra waving a red Guess flag what? I've never seen thing. someone never do seen? on, let's say, a marijuana. What's that? I have scroll? never <laughs> seen someone get stoned and then get into a fight. No, or no, they, they like tend to too chill. mellow or whatever. So I've changed my beliefs about that nope. in thinking that, you know what? If somebody was to use too much of a of a drug, it probably would be better to be that than alcohol. Yeah, no, this is interesting. I only went out with one girl who smoked and it always put me off. To me, that's a deal mm -hmm. breaker in a relationship. Yeah, for sure. I, just, I think it's stinky. I just don't like it. Okay, yeah. we're, we're on a whole okay. smoking thing. Yeah. It's all programmed. But about it's, smoking. that's about beliefs and how right. they form. Now, so what- What about, here's one. Some people adopt, adopt slogans which become their beliefs. Like hard oh. work leads to a good life. Like that kind mm -hmm. of thing. You know, and two, <laughs> two weeks, weeks to, to flatten, flatten the, the curve. curve. Here we are 730 <laughs> days later. Yeah. I love that so one. Some decks are just saying two, two weeks. weeks to flatten the curve. Yeah. Two more weeks. That's it. I love how people go, hey, we're 758 yeah. days into two weeks to flatten the Victor curve. Victor Suvorov was a go. former um, Soviet officer who defected to NATO years and years ago. And he wrote a book called Inside the um, Soviet Army. And he talked about, he said they always, it was always a five-year plan. Mm. We are, we're, you know, working through socialism now. We're five years away from pure communism. And everyone just, yeah, we're five years, just five more years. Yeah. And holding on to the belief, despite all the evidence to the contrary. That's a really good point. Just, and of course, you know, I used to be a stock analyst. And a lot of the times the executive teams on their conference calls and yeah. presentations, they would talk about their dreams. Well, in about X amount of time. And what did that program analyst often ask? Well, uh, how are we doing? Are you on track for such and such? And if the story changed a little, oh yeah, we're, we're just pushing that out another quarter or so, but the belief is still there. And then people will tend to believe it alongside them. Yeah. And sometimes you have to question these beliefs and now, wonder. You, you you mentioned now you're right and you mentioned about your mom was such a great mm -hmm. hypnotist so you never smoked if you smoked it would kill you mm -hmm. and uh, we'll be testing that at some point okay. scary if we get a couple of packs of cigarettes to get chris to smoke them on this show <laughs> now santa claus classic thing installed by parents yes and culture tooth fairy. Uh, tooth fairy yeah you know uh in England, you don't, you never put your teeth under the pillow. They, they, both of these things, the Santa and the Tooth Fairy thing are different. Did you know that? Yeah, I did not know that. I think you told me once about in England. Yeah, you don't. In North America, we t the kids are supposed to take their teeth and put it, tuck it under the pillow. Right. Which makes it really freaking annoying for the for parent. the parents, i.e. the Tooth Fairy, don't that, scare anyone. So the Brits are smarter, basically. Well, well, you know, we did not put a stocking. We didn't get our presents under a tree at Christmas. Mm -hmm. We put a pillowcase at the end of your bed. And so the parents would get a, a similar pillowcase, fill it with toys, sneak in, take the empty one out and set the one you'd wake up and it'd be there at the end of your bed. No kidding. But the tooth fairy thing, they, yeah, it wasn't under the pillow. You put the money or you put the tooth mm -hmm. underneath the rug, like the carpet in the living room. That's and I remember our first Halloween in Canada and when we're, it was over, I got the pumpkin and I broke the teeth off the pumpkin and put them under the rug to see if I'd get money. Ah, uh, there you go. You're now, a thinking what, my, man. My, my sister had a horrible snake phobia and my mother installed that. She believed, she believed that if she saw a snake, like she'd freaking die. My mom was terrified of snakes and kept telling me, she said, snake, watch out. Yeah, snake. there you and go. And my sister developed mm -hmm. a snake phobia, and which I an, cured. So course. that becomes an unconscious belief, right? Where right. my mom telling me, you will never smoke, it will kill you. That was very <laughs> clearly that a, one. that was not a covert statement, right? <laughs> I think it was a direct suggestion. But, but when you when you freak out and you <laughs> model behavior and a kid picks that up, that will now turn into a yeah, belief. Yeah, and you're but adding the direct suggestion. Yeah, yeah. And there is no, there is no statement made well, snakes to, are dangerous and scary you should back be afraid to freddie jacklin right yeah. create an emotion give a suggestion bingo and there it is and there's your unconscious formation of belief uh, here's what my dad installed in me and i'm mm. not kidding chris I've, I've had trouble shaking it to this day <laughs> my dad taught me as ex-british army 
from Manchester, like I was born there, speaking like this all the time as a boy. My dad taught me that the British, not just the English, but the Welsh and the Scottish and to a lesser degree the Irish, were the best at everything. Mm. We're the best. We're British. We're British. So we're just just the best at everything. Mm. I had trouble shaking that, buddy. Now I'm willing to accept that Canadians and Americans and French and Chinese do have things to offer. You had this ingrained attitude from your dad yeah. that the British were the best. That's right. That's great. Because oh. every 50 years, yeah. the French let the Germans invade and we've got to go and throw them out for them. <laughs> He like, picked up a lot dad. of stuff from I your did. dad. Now, that's authorities awesome. and circumstances will build beliefs. Oh, and yeah. Said, well, this is, this is why we tell hypnotists yes. to use the power of prestige. Say Hitler. Yeah. Is it, that's why we tell, <laughs> yeah. that's why we tell hypnotists to yeah. use the power of prestige. So if you are a skilled hypnotist and someone comes to see you and you can help them overcome their problem because they believe that you can, yes. that makes the result more powerful. Well, and yes. in fact, the pl we've talked about placebo and nocebo. nocebo and yeah. if I believe that taking this colored pill, even though it may be sugar, is going to make my headache go away, yeah. that can cause a result. So beliefs are very, very well, powerful. Well, it was Dr. Krasner who mm -hmm. said that belief plus expectation equals hypnosis. Yeah, and there you go. Mm -hmm. Donald Thane, who I've mentioned before, my grade six teacher, the best teacher I've ever had in my life, um, he taught me and got me to believe that learning is fun and exciting. Yeah. And he made learning such a blast. We had a horned toad in our class that could spit blood from its eyes. I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding. We had snakes. And I want that. Man, that's like a superpower. Everything was wonderful. And then, of course, mm -hmm. um, when I was bullied incessantly, as you know, and I won't go on and on about that, and Mr. Goulding, my grade five teacher before Mr. Thane, pretty well decimated my life and freaked me out. Really he made badly. your life hell. But I adopted the belief from him and the bullying. One day I'm going to get so smart and so freaking tough that nobody can do this to me anymore. Guess what? Jiu-jitsu, yeah. bullying stopped. Yeah. Yep. And we, we actually, we just recorded a video on this topic and we added in a couple of notes. I had two beliefs that I developed and yes. I, I guess at some point I made them conscious because obviously, or I wouldn't be able to talk about them, but I decided that I believe with all conviction that I have that I do not quit and I can learn anything. Yeah, Maybe you, not you anything, do. but you know what I mean. Anything that I need you put to put your learn, mind to, yeah. I can freaking learn it. If it's technology to build a website or Dude, grow a business or that. marketing yeah. or yeah. Hypnosis, hypnosis skill or playing a guitar or whatever it is. I can learn it and it'll be, and that is very much reinforced. Yeah, if anyone I know, you had that determination to not get yeah. blocked. It and then true. the whole, if this is important to me, because I, I'll quit certain things if I decide I don't want to do them anymore. But if something is important, I never freaking quit. I just don't give up. I keep going at it little by little, getting better by better. It might take way longer than I expected, but I'll get it done. That's and brilliant. you can see that you can hear the conviction. Brilliant. Now I'm right? jumping ahead here because mm. we've already been going I know, half we've a been... freaking hour. Holy moly. Now look, um, okay. some beliefs are loaded. Some convictions are loaded with emotions. Mm. I have a relative through marriage and we joke and say that we're brothers and um, he's black. I mean, he's Jamaican and we get along so freaking well. He's the nicest guy you'd ever meet. He's super smart. He's got amazing skill sets. He teaches. He does all kinds of stuff. He's just a great guy. But he shared with me that his mother-in-law won't even won't even talk to him like she because his daughter, her daughter, married an African Canadian. So Jamaican Canadian. And this woman the has mother, a belief issue with people have tried to talk to her about it. And she said, Well, that's just the way I'm raised. So she so, she has an issue with mixed race. Yes. The and children. Just, yes. And, and, and that's her conviction. Now, yeah. Despite the fact that he's the best husband for her daughter okay, you so could ever freaking want. That's a perfect example of a Thank deeply you. held conviction that this woman has that is harming her life yeah. and harming the lives of if other people. She won't people have anything to do her, with right? them now. Yeah. So yeah, in fact that that really, yeah, when when issues of racism come up and stuff like yeah. that, pisses us off because that is a, is a totally wrong way to act that just because of where somebody happens to have come from. It's insane. Or their I, genetic background. I, I, heard, a, I mm -hmm. heard a geneticist speak once um, and he said that race is an absolute construct and an illusion. It's like saying dogs have different races. They're yeah. just dogs and humans are humans. You know what it, Chris and I are racist. And what we mean by that is we support our own race, the human, the human race. race we don't it. care about Martians so, and Jovians. Um, we support the human race. You just got me thinking of something. Uh -oh. oh, there we go. I thought I closed up my notes here. Um, 
you got me thinking about darn it it just was on the tip of my tongue it was something what else something have you that just had to do forgotten? with beliefs and the idea of racism brought it up and, okay oh right it's just the idea of being proud people will say oh i'm like we're canadian proud right? of their heritage i'm proud a proud canadian do you know what I didn't do anything to become a Canadian. Yeah, so I why, happened why to be, be born here. I didn't yeah. do anything. There's no merit involved. Uh, yeah, I'm not yeah. proud that I have blonde hair or, or whatever, or proud that I have a, a jawline or whatever the or heck. Or your Polish heritage. Yeah, it, these are all irrelevant because I didn't do anything. Now, it's fine. People say that. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to say or making a judgment on it. But if you want to be proud of something or if you want to compliment someone else, and that's where I was going with this. Right. Compliment somebody else on something that they accomplished, not something that you they just You mean like if someone gets in. an order of the British Empire or a knighthood or something? <laughs> oh, like Jimmy Savile. Well, no, it doesn't work. If you want to compliment someone, for example, instead yeah. of complimenting them on, oh, I really love the color of your hair. No, maybe- <laughs> Only if they, they dyed it. Born that way. Maybe compliment them on the style on that they chose for their hair or the, or the cool t-shirt that they chose to wear, yeah. right? I really like that bandana. You weren't born with that bandana. Yeah. Is that the right term? Am it I using? Is. Well, yeah. yeah. Whatever. But that's a choice like you it. made, right? So, and of course, people uh, make choices often based on their beliefs. So to tie it down and to fretboard this whole idea. Yeah, you, man. You've got to compliment people on things that they actually put some work into deciding or choosing or whatever it is, rather than, oh, this really cool blonde hair you have. No, they didn't choose that. They didn't choose to be born in Canada or choose to be black or white or whatever. Well, Chris, we have these points I'm going to go uh -oh. to cover because we've sort of gone go. out. So right. we have an important update coming in right now. Important update from Hypno North in Meaford, Ontario. Yeah, how are you tonight? Thanks again. That's your old pal Bredo here. I got to tell you about what's going on up here in Meaford and fasten your hypnotic seatbelt because you're not going to believe it. So I was watching on the news about that super genius Elon Musk and his billions of freaking dollars and how he's taken on Twitter and stuff about free speech and that and how he's not content to pretty well start with PayPal and build electric cars and all that. But he's sending rockets to Mars and he just keeps coming up with cool stuff. Well, anyway, I was sitting near the potbelly stove in the kitchen because it's still about 200,000 degrees below zero up here and pretty miserable. And I've been passing out flyers in Owen Sound trying to get some new patients and that. I just sent my iPhone 5 rings. Damn near scares the crap out of me because I forgot I set the ringer on the theme for Jeopardy, which I've always wanted to go on, but never got the chance. And the ringing made me sit bolt upright and it must have been dozing. And I thought that Alex Trebek had asked me a question, even though he's freaking dead in that. And I was pretty tense for a moment. And then I answered it thinking it was a patient who needed hypnosis because I'm getting pretty desperate for money. Really need some kind of coin for food. And I dropped my hypnosis rates to 15 bucks an hour and the bastards still aren't calling. So I jumped up and answered the phone with hope in my heart. Soon ran into the chainsaw of reality because it was that dick Eddard. He decided he'd get some investors together, raise some money because he'd been reading about Elon Musk and that and Twitter and figured he could arrange a hostile takeover <laughs> of Tim Horton's Donuts. <laughs> Well, I realized he was being a dick because it's his effing nature. And I asked how many investors he had. And of course, it was only one. And of course, it was Duder. And he was all thrilled to tell me that they'd raised nearly 80 bucks. And the way he said it, I could tell that Duder was there grinning with pride in the background of their brilliant <laughs> idea. So I got so depressed, I told him to go take a long walk in a short pier and play with some rusty razor blades on the way. And I hung up. And what makes it worse is that recently, I sort of got interested in the young woman named Brandy, who's a waitress at the downtown or hotel. And I told her I was a hypnosis guru and she didn't believe me. And then Duder comes in with his greasy mullet hairstyle and stupid bell-bottom pants, and he tells her he's a hypnotist. Next thing you know, they're out in the parking lot popping in the beater. So this is a guy who's every... If his evening of a date is a giant bottle of Pepsi and four hours of playing Space Invaders or Donkey Kong, and it's depressing as hell. So this has been your old pal Bredo reporting on the pathetic state of hypnosis here in the land of who really gives a rip about anything. So thanks once again, and good night. Thanks, Bredo, for your amazing update from Meaford, Ontario. And now back to the Fritz and Jeff show. Thank you, Chris. My question is, can a belief that's not true still be empowering? Oh, well, sure it can. Um, I'm looking for an example because can a belief that's not true be disempowering? Yes. Can a belief that's true be disempowering. I think, yes, it can. So can a belief that's not true 
be empowering? Oh, that's a tricky one. I think it's all getting very zen. Isn't I it? think it can, but we need now. We need to prove it to, because this is just an opinion at this point. Can we turn it into a conviction? Um, can you think of a belief that wasn't true in your life that was empowering at some point? <sighs> Not off the top of my head. No. What about um? That's really t- this is actually quite a. Quite a tricky one. Oh, that's brilliant. It's okay, brilliant. email us with your thoughts on this one if you have any ideas or, or put them in the comments. But I'm thinking, what about if you have a belief that you're going to be able to accomplish something and you never end up being able to accomplish it? Okay. You never but end up being able to accomplish shit. Com- 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 that, that did sound weird, didn't it? Yeah. Embedded. Let's say that I believe yeah, just- with all my heart I am going to be able to jump up in the air and do a double somersault and land, and on, land on my feet from a standing start yeah, there you go <laughs> and I, and it's crazy i can't do that i'm never going to be able to do that but i could do one i could do one somersault so you, you see that could so be used as a way of of triggering a response so you start working yeah on and then i'd right? modify my belief after the fact convince myself i only thought that i would only improve at this and not actually do a double somersault in the air well yeah um, i mean some beliefs can be very bizarre mm-hmm. I, when i was on w5 which is a cross canada tv show they interviewed me for this thing and i got the phone call started coming into my business line when i was still available to the general public and one woman phoned left a three-minute message and it timed out and she phoned again and continued it <laughs> and her beliefs chris she said i'm not making this up that jack ruby was her brother-in-law and she'd come to canada on a ship and teddy kennedy was the captain of the ship and oj simpson was i'm not exaggerating oh, man and i thought you can't make this up now none of those beliefs i don't think any of those are empowering for her i don't think so i would imagine that probably most beliefs that are not true are not empowering. People hold on to a lot of junk. Now, I'm going to, before we get into the empowering question, mm-hmm. let me mention here my comment on a belief I had that was disempowering. And we have to present the challenges, the questions that people can use to challenge their own beliefs. And yes. Others. We have to do that. That's right. Well, then we can do the empowering question. The belief I had, and then we'll close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The belief I had for years, I've mentioned before, my mom died of cancer at age 53. My dad died of heart disease at age 57. And my wife and I, all four of our parents died young. And we had programmed this into ourselves. Oh, yeah, you had a belief. And we believed we were going to die young in our 50s because our parents did. So and why con- save? Well, yeah. Consequently, we didn't save for the future. We didn't think about the future because we're going to be dead anyway. And it, we really lived that way for a long time. And then one day we went, why the heck are we living like this? And we challenged that belief. And we thought, this is no way to live. And we started, plus we'd gone past, so we're, you know, in I don't know, late fifties by this point or early sixties for me. And we realized this is not a way to live. And we readdressed this whole thing and said, no, we're going to live in great health. We're going to live a long life. And that's why I even said today to Chris in a video we're doing, I believe, you know, I'm going to be 69 years old in two weeks. And I believe my best years are still ahead of me. So that's the date. That's an empowering belief. That's the date we're recording podcast episode 202. Right. That'll be your 69th birthday. And you know, we have a post office box box that's listed on our website. I love 12 year old single malt scotch. (laughs) That's right. I I believe all these boxes. I believe you're a good person and will send me some. Now, listen, um, Chris, let's let's go to this addressing the beliefs and questioning them. Yes. So, all right. This is perhaps the most important thing we're going to teach you because otherwise it was just a a weird discussion of all these different strange beliefs but the idea of of emotions and i think i think there's been some good stuff here let's talk about the two questions that you can ask of yourself or of someone else and you want to of course do this in a polite way you don't want to sound like a dick when you're asking this question or you'll destroy rapport that's a separate conversation though (laughs) if you if somebody presents a belief to you or you recognize that this is part of their belief system what's the question number one how did you come to believe that was true how did you come to in other words how did you come to formulate that belief what was the genesis of this in your life what yeah what caused this to become a belief in you but now they may not know they might go hebrew i I actually don't know, right? Or they might say, well, no, I read if they're talking about um, something else. Well, they might say, I nature. just always believe yeah. that. You say, well, but what was the first time you can actually remember believing mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. Where did this come from? So you get the genesis of it first. Yeah, let's I'll do a quick example and then yeah, we'll go yeah, to the next sure. question. So quick example is that I used to, like many people, believe that if we simply 
count our calories, we can maintain appropriate body mass, et cetera. Yeah. And I also thought that, uh, well, this is much more real on point here. I used to think that things like white bread were, were just so-called empty calories. They weren't bad. They weren't going to cause me any harm. Right. They were just, and look at the state of now. Just, they were just empty calories. Yeah. So far, and the same thing with, let's say, drinking orange juice. I thought, well, it's coming from a, from a from fruit. From a cow. It's, yeah. it's <laughs> coming from a cow. Orange juice comes from a fruit. It's It must be healthy. So having toast and peanut butter and, and orange a juice ounce glass was of orange a juice. wonderfully healthy meal. And perhaps it might be some empty calories, but the orange juice was good. Yeah, the peanut butter calcium was good. And, and then the bread C. was irrelevant. Anyway, there were a lot of things I didn't know. What what formed that belief? I was just, was taught that. Like I was, right. it, was, it was the model of calories in, calories out. That was what made sense to me, right? It seemed yeah. very mathematical and yeah. I was a science and math guy. Yeah. So there we go. But I don't believe any of that anymore because I have new information. Because if I was to ask myself, well, what caused me to believe that? Not because I'd done any research right. at all. I just heard it and was repeating right. the party line. Which leads to the second question. Right. The second challenge is, how, How do, do you, you know, know it's true? true? It's a really good question. And together, this is the one-two punch, right? So how did you come to believe like this? That, and how do you know that it's true? Because yeah. that, but where you, the genesis of your belief isn't the same as knowing it's true, right? So that's and a really, really interesting because um, someone I know, and I, I won't give any detail <laughs> here, um, her it's mother funny. plays piano in their house all the time. And this young woman was going to an art school and she said she knew she'd be able to get into the business. Now that's anybody who's an entertainer knows show business is mm -hmm. the business. And she knew she'd be able to get into the business because her mother mom was in the business piano. and she had the DNA. And I just asked the question, how is your mom in the business? And she looked and I watched a transdervational search and she went, she, she's not. That's weird. So she had just been telling herself this perhaps unconsciously all these years. But maybe it was empowering and when her. you, yeah, and maybe it was because if she believed, even though, oh, my mom, that's actually a really good example of an empowering belief that isn't. So I'm here, buddy, at just at to all. rescue you. you. All yeah. right. This, this, uh, this podcast that had refund all over it is now. It's back in business. It's back in the business. It's, you, business. The, <laughs> it's, it's become fine. entertaining again. <laughs> no, look. Okay. So yeah, challenge <laughs> things. Okay, Chris, give us the empowering questions. We got to okay. go to lunch. We got yes. to go to Colonel Bastard. Here is, your, for here is your empowering question. Let me see if I can find it. I believe that I can, and I believe I will ask it to you right now what beliefs are you willing to evaluate now and what will you do to ensure that what you believe is true or at least useful and notice you can tell i'm serious because i'm pointing nice <laughs> well here's the meta five and it's going to be quick and we're going to do a psychedelic ending today all right so the meta five is a short one and it's true again Best ones are from our own lives. One better than metaphor. Don't be standing up. No, I'm my, saying, my friend, I'm, I'm Captain Morgan. My friend, Norm Yates, when I was a kid, we were in Cubs together. We met because he pushed my head into a tree when we were kids. But Norm became a very good friend. And um, we had moved away at, when I was 10. And I still kept in touch with him for a little while. And one day I'd phoned him up from our apartment in Scarborough, no longer in the city of Toronto. And we were talking about something and he triggered a memory. And I said, oh, I'll go and see if I can find that. Have you got a minute? He said, okay. So he waits on the phone. And I went and looked through my drawer for whatever this item was. I was trying to find, I can't remember. And it wasn't there. And I found like some old comic books and stuff. <laughs> I totally forgotten about. I started flipping through them and I found this other. And I said, and I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding, Chris. Do you know how long I was doing that? <laughs> Did you stay on the phone is what I want 40 <laughs> minutes. I went, I was talking to Norm 40 minutes ago. I went, put stuff down. I ran back in. I went, Norm? And he went, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe he was still there. You can't make this stuff up. Okay. No this idea. has been Brain Software 201. Thanks again. And good, good night. night.